I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will learn concepts about relative velocity. We'll see how do we represent the vectors, how do we resolve these vectors, add them and find the resultant, especially when we are talking about relative velocity. Let us enjoy this journey of success with the student, Akshat. Uh, then you were also saying that you might be doing uh, velocity and uh, those applications, right? Force and velocity. Yes, sir. So we look into vectors applications, velocity. Yeah. So, we normally have applications where we're talking about relative velocity. Right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> and may, so there are three types of questions here in relative velocity. One is within in the air when plane, aeroplane is going, right? Wind is there, which makes changes in the direction. Yeah. Or you may have it on the in the water where the boat is going and the current of the water is there, or on the land when we talk about two cars moving in different directions. Is it okay? Right. And we will be interested in finding the distance between them or something related to that. Yeah. So here is a very good question for you. Can you please read the question? Yes, sir. How is the velocity of the airplane, wind velocity and relative velocity of the plane with the ground connected? That's very important, right? So yeah. most of the time, you know, when there are word problems, you get into this, but it's kind of difficult to understand what is the relation between all these three, right? Right. So, so this is what we're trying to uh, make you understand in this particular video. So a plane, when we show it with this type of a head angle, in that yes. case, it is actually moving in this direction. Let us say it is going at a bearing of 45 degrees from north, right? Okay. But now there is wind, which is pushing it down. So actually it does not go like this, but it moves like this. Do you see that? Right, yeah. It is moving in this fashion. So when we show the plane, we show the heading. This is It is heading in this direction, but wind is going here, so it actually moves horizontally also, and it does not yeah. move at the intended place, but it goes to the third point. You get the idea? Yeah. When we say ground velocity, that means a relative velocity. The result right. is what that gives you the resultant velocity. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. These are the three terms which are very well connected as shown in this particular diagram. So now here, uh, let me just go further so that all the terms are absolutely clear to you. So we have just randomly picked up some values to give you a diagram and to understand how do we solve such questions, correct? Correct. VP is the velocity of the plane. We have taken that to be 400 kilometers per hour. From north, it is 30 degrees east. So that 30 degrees is shown, right? Yeah. VW is the wind velocity 80 kilometers per hour, bearing of 130 degrees. Bearing angle is always measured clockwise from north. So mm. 130 will mean like this, as shown as O to B. O to B is 130 degrees, that orange line. Ground velocity, velocity of the plane with respect to ground, it is also called the resultant velocity. So yeah. resultant velocity and the ground with respect to ground, same thing. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, resultant is kind of commonly used, but ground velocity is not so commonly used. And therefore, students might get confused at times. So, you know this vector O to B can be translated, keeping it on A, we get A to C, which is parallel yes. and equal to O B. And therefore the resultant is O to C, right? Now yes, in this angle, is O to A is 30 degrees, O to B is 130 degrees, their difference of 80 degrees is A. At a. We know 400 and 800 as two sides of a triangle with included angle of 80. And therefore, applying the cosine law, we can easily find O to C. That right. is the resultant, right? Yeah. And the direction we can find using sine law. Sine. Once we get that. 
So that is how we are going to solve relative velocity questions. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Any question for that matter, but the concept remains just as shown here. So you have right. to draw a neat and clean diagram as shown here and then work on it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So let me pick up another question which is similar to this. Okay, now here is another diagram. Can you please read the question and relate to the diagram? Today, our idea is to understand how do we solve these questions, right? Yeah. And once you get conversant, you can do any question from your book, right? Yeah, right. read the question, please. Yes, sir. A pilot wishes to fly on a bearing of west 22 degrees north with the ground speed of 300 kilometers per hour. There is a 60 kilometers per hour wind from the direction south 15 degrees west. Calculate the heading and the airspeed that the navigator should use. Right. What is the meaning of ground speed of 300 kilometers per hour? Can you explain? Yes, sir. Uh, like we just discussed, it would be the resultant. Resultant is given to you this time. And we right. want to find where was the plane heading. Correct? You understand Correct. now the terms. Diagram yeah. is before you. So, a pilot wishes to fly on a bearing of from west 22 degrees north, right? No. So yeah. given here, right? From west 22. Now, <clears throat> there is 60 kilometers per hour wind in the direction south, 15 degrees west, which is also right. given to you, and calculate the heading. So all these angles given to you help you to find the angle at that vertex, where two sides right. are given. So you have to find the included angle. In this right. case, happens to be 83 degrees and that included angle and the two sides will give you the third side using cosine law. And right. then all this, you get the idea. Yes, sir. Got it. So all these questions are actually done in this fashion. Yeah. Okay. So next, let's see what is the next. So here is a complete playlist which has a lot of examples based on relative velocity, right? So I'd yeah. like you to explore this playlist and understand how do we solve such questions, right? So yeah. as I was saying, we looked into the examples based on uh, wind velocity and the plane velocity, or also the ground velocity, which is called the resultant velocity in many cases. Yeah. We'll yeah. now take up an example where we have uh, things moving in the water. So can you please read the right. question? Yes, sir. Anil is driving a motorboat which has a speed of 20 kilometers per hour in still water and wants to reach the lighthouse directly across the river, which is two kilometers wide, and the current flows at six kilometers per hour in the same way. Good. Case one. If he heads directly across, how far downstream from the lighthouse will he land and how long will it take? Case two. If he needs to land directly across at the lighthouse, in what direction should he head and what is the resultant velocity of the boat? And case three, if he aims upstream at an angle of 70 degrees with the bank, then how far will he land from the lighthouse? Perfect. This is one of the best examples yeah. where I have considered all the three cases in one example, right? Right. So <clears throat> we're given a situation. We know what is the stream uh, velocity or the river velocity. We know the width which, or the distance to be covered, right? Across yeah. horizontally. And what could happen? You could head straight to the stream. point, but you will land down because of the down. stream, of course. Right. You could aim upwards and land somewhere else. You don't know what angle, but you may calculate the angle so that you land exactly where you want to land. So these are the three important cases. Only questions are based on these three cases. Perfect. So once yeah. you do this example, which uh, seems to be of half an hour long, you will understand complete concept on this chapter of relative velocity. You get the idea? Yes. Now, once you've done that, then you should actually explore. There are 21 other videos in this particular place. They should help you to master the technique. You get the idea? Right, yeah. So what I'd like you to do now is actually uh, get into one of these playlists and uh, get ahead of your Because you already done the test paper Right. On unit one, which is yeah. in algebraic uh, working or operations on vectors. And next is the application where yeah. 
c relative velocity uh, to work with in the next class we can discuss yeah yeah so that we could do is that okay yes sir sounds good so we can stop uh, uh, playing this but can you now summarize your learnings from today's class yes sir so in today's class we actually finished the last chapter and also began the new one so with the last chapter i think um the examples in your test really solidified my understanding of r squared and r cubed and um, i think without even actually drawing the prisms and everything i have a better understanding of how to approach the problem now and then with respect to the velocity problems we just did i think it's very similar to the to the physics problems we had but now we have to like actually see the numbers and see how we can relate vectors yeah i will suggest with velocity at least 6 7 examples you should yeah. draw accurately right as given right. everything once you make that drawing then uh, you have to understand that you need to find the angle which is yeah. the corner where the two right. sides are given to you apply the once you get the third side apply the sine law to get the rest of the angles and right write your answer with respect to uh, bearing angle which is always measured from north or yeah. from given reference so mention yeah. the reference when you write down the answer right so yes, that sir. help you to uh, get full marks in this particular chapter okay yes sir great so we'll end there but that practice test which we took uh yeah. you should do it on your own uh, anytime yes sir i'll solve it again great okay then all the best thank you thank you sir bye have a great day